בעזרת השם. ליקוטי מוהר"ן, תורה ל"ט, 39. רבנו is teaching us about the purity of the person, how strong we should be on guarding our eyes, on controlling ourselves, like that the Gemara is saying to us that Ezeu Gibor, HaKovesh Yitzro, who is that hero, the person that we can call him a hero, the one that controls himself. How much we need to be strong on that, to put our mind, to focus it on controlling ourselves, that you're going to choose who you are, what you're doing with your life, what you want to achieve in life, and do that. And don't be a slave of your lust and desires. And this is why we're saying on that mitzvah, mitzvat ona, on mating, that the person needs to think for himself, ke'ilu kefaoshed, like there is something that forcing you to do that means that you will not going to be in the hands of your, of your desires and lusts to be a slave. Just control yourself. A lot of people falling into that place with their lusts and desires that they're losing control and then they're making their wives very miserable. That is something that we have to uproot. We have to tear, torn, tear that out from this world. Even that it seems to be so hard and people fell to that ta'avaya to that horrible lust and they feel like they don't have no control it's so pathetic it's so pathetic and we as men we have to fight against that and to change that and even though that it's going to be very hard for us and Hashem is going to want us all and going to demand it from us that we're going to be role models for that, that we're going to show and be a live example for that, we have to do that. And we have to fight. Because what that man done until today in this world is not right. People are abusing their wives. People are hurting their wives. People are tearing their wives to pieces, crushing them down, insulting them, breaking them to pieces. And it's not allowed. Making them feel guilt. And it's not allowed to do those things. There is a mitzvah, we're obligated to Torah or mitzvot. You're not allowed to ruin a person's life. You're not allowed to touch the emotions of a person and to play with them like it belongs to you, like he's your slave. We're not allowed to do those things. We as human beings, we are as slaves of Hashem, as soldiers of Hashem Itbarach. We need to be in 100% of control on ourselves. And not to let our will and our desires and our lusts to control our lives and to take us to do things and to act out of our weaknesses and out of our fears and anxieties. We're not like that. And we're not allowed to let it happen because you're afraid, because you need, because you want, so you're going to do things on, 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 on the account of someone else. Someone that doesn't want it at all, someone that wants to be free, someone that wants to be left alone, someone that wants to live. Those things are very, very, very sensitive. And they're damaging and destroying the Parnassah and the Shefa of all of Am Israel. Because the Gemara is telling us, If you want to be rich, you need to learn how to honor your wives, how to respect your wives. And if us and the world as a nation, as, as a group of people, we're destroying our wives and disrespecting them and forcing them because we're stronger physically or using our wisdom, our mind to control them emotionally. That's a horrible thing that Hashem Yitbarach, He doesn't like that. And He will not going to let that continue. And this is why we see so much destruction in the world. This is why we see so many houses are, are broken and couples are separating because women had it. It's enough for them. This is why the feminism is, is growing in the world and people are, are, are and, and they're right. You need to understand because they're running away from, from being slaves. They're running away from, from being under the control of their husbands. Who are we to control them? Who are we to force them? Are you allowed to use someone for your own needs? Are they a vessel in your hands? Are they a tool in your hand? Are they slaves? Are you allowed to buy slave? You allowed to use, you allowed to use someone? We're not allowed to permit that to ourselves, so that's the beginning. If really you want to change something in the world, you need to control yourself. And if you want to control yourself, so you need to take yourself seriously. 
And to work on that day and night, day and night, day and night, to work on that, to control yourself and not to let your lust decide for you. No, now he needs money, so everything is allowed. Now he needs to rest, so everything is allowed. No, nothing is allowed. You have the rules, the Shulchan Aruch, that allows you exactly what you allow and what you not allow. And you're not allowed to make your wife sad. And women are saying, what am I going to do in the night of mikveh? What am I going to do? And women, are, they don't know what to do. Because if she doesn't want to be with her husband in the mikveh day, She's not allowed to say that. Why she's not allowed? She's going she gonna to make him angry. It's not your mikveh day. It's her mikveh day. It's not your mitzvah. It's not your celebration day. It's her day. Now you allow to be with her if she wants to be with you. And if not, you don't have no mitzvah here. It's not your night. It's not your pleasure. It's not your game. She's not your machine. She's not your prostitute. She's a person. She's a human being. And you're not allowed to use her whenever you want to use her because you want to use her. You're just not allowed to do that. And we as men need to wake up from our deep sleep and understanding that. Who are we to use our women, our wives? Who are we? To do something so horrible, it's not allowed. You need to respect your wife. You need to please your wife. You need to make her happy. If it doesn't make her happy, so you're not doing it. And now, men losing their minds. What I'm going to do? I'm going to have Zerle Batala. I'm going to have Mikalayla. What I'm going to do? Do tshuva, ya idiot. <laughs> Stupid guy. Go to the field and cry to Hashem Bach to save you. Is it her fault that you're a sinner? Is it her fault that you don't control yourself? I'm going to have zera lebatala. I'm going to have zera le... It's all your fault. My fault that you're sick in your mind and you have filthy dreams? It's my fault that you're sick in your mind and you're dreaming on women? It's my fault that you're not thinking about Hashem when you're asleep? That you're not thinking about the Torah when you're asleep? It's my fault that you're not learning enough Torah? That you're looking at other women in the streets and you have thoughts? And you feel like you need to take it all on me? That's, the, that's your thoughts? And, it's, and you're going to blame your wife on that? She's the one to be blamed that you're sick and you not control yourself? And you need to cool yourself with your tavot on her? She's not your prostitute. Wake up to that. Wake up to that. I'm calling all men in the world, wake up. It's such a disgrace to hold that level that you use someone for your needs. Your wife, she's your toilet. She's your prostitute. You're not allowed to do that. And we have to tear, tear it out, tear out that lust from our hearts. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. It's a prohibition. It's Isur Hamur. It's a very strict prohibition. It's not allowed at all. No excuses. You need to control yourself. You need to control your emotions and your lusts and your thoughts and to be a man. And enough, you know, if your wife she just wants you to be with her, you need to be able to do that. And just to hug her, and just to give her a hand, or just to give her a good night kiss, and to go to sleep, and to leave her alone, to take her own decisions in life. And if we as men not going to do tshuva on that, <laughs> we're nothing, we're worthless. We not deserve no honor, we not deserve no respect. If you allow yourself to make other people miserable, and to use other people... And if you think to yourself that someone is enjoying with you, so you're in a very, very low place. Your wife, she enjoy the, the, the emotional side of it. Your wife, she wants to feel that there is someone that cares about her. Your wife, she wants to feel that someone loves her. 
And when you're occupied in yourself, and when you're thinking about yourself, and when you're busy with your lusts and desires, so she cannot feel you. So she cannot feel no pleasure. That's not a pleasure. That's an imagination. And we need to do tshuva on that. And we need to go and to talk to everyone that we know about that. That's a very, very important thing to dis dis distribute, to, to tell the world that we need to control ourselves and we're not allowed to, to, to set our lusts and desires free to be however we feel like, however we feel that we need, whatever we... That's not a man. A man who... He controls himself. Ugover, he is overpowering on all of his lusts and desires, on all of his weaknesses. He's overpowering on everything. He's taking position, taking himself seriously. And if he sees that he's got fears and stress and weaknesses, he's doing tshuva on that. He's taking himself to work. He's going to work on his attributes, on his midot. He's going to the field and he's doing tshuva. And he's confessing in front of Hashem, and he's doing tshuva, and he says, Hashem, please, give me the power that I will not going to be led by, by my, my lusts, my weaknesses, my fears. Let me serve you. Let me commit myself to you. Let me be that man that you want me to be. Someone that is kind. Someone that is soft. Someone that cares. Someone that appreciates. Someone that can listen. When you're busy on, on, on finding things for yourself, to, ple to pleasure yourself, to satisfy yourself, and that's what you're doing, you're a thief. You're a criminal. You're doing things against the laws of the Torah. You're doing things behind the back of your wife, against honesty. And if your wife and you are holding in a place that you can talk, that you can tell her, it's hard for me, and you can run a conversation, great. So talk about it and solve your issues and come to the truth and say, it's too hard for me. I don't know what to do. I want to work on myself. I want to achieve that 100% control on myself, but it's too hard for me. Great. If you're able to talk, talk. And if you please her, so everything is great. If now you enjoy being together, be together. It's perfect. No one's saying no. But the, never that it will come from one side. That it will never going to come only from your need, from your desire. Only, only, only with respect, with mutual respect, <coughs> with kindness, with love, with appreciation. Not behind no one's back. Not to scamming and thinking and planning and all things that are filthing the thoughts, filthing the brain of the person. He becomes to be like an animal. He loses his humanity. His purity, his clear mind, he becomes to be like an animal, like a predator. All of the time he's planning and thinking and seeking and finding and looking and, 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 and he loses his purity, loses his beauty, his grace. And he becomes to be like an animal, that's it. And all day long, bad thoughts all day long, thinking, what's he going to do? And all of the time, like an animal, and that's how he makes money, and that's how he makes peace in the house, and that's how he's educating his children, <coughs> like an animal, and that's how he's with his friends, in his, in his company, all of the time, thinking and planning, and you lost your kudusha, you lost your purity. Go back to Hashem, go back to Hashem, say to Hashem, I want to tell you how my body do not look like. I'm begging to Hashem, please fix me. Please fix me. With no arrogance at all. Just surrendering to Hashem. Throwing everything to Hashem. Everything I'm throwing on Hashem. Everything. They tell him, please do everything. Do. You do everything. I'm nullifying myself to you. Whatever you want. I don't want to decide anything. I don't want to decide. I love you, Hashem. You're going to decide for me. Teach me. What's the path of truth? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to learn? What's the subject of Torah that I need to learn? What is required for me? What is important for me? How I'm going to work on my manners, on my midot? How I'm going to be a polite person, a generous person? Let me understand. You need to have time. You need to have space. For that, you need to have faith. 
So you need to take yourself to the side. You need to move yourself, your inner will, your selfish will, to move it to the sides. To have time for your wife, to have time for your friends, to have, to have time for your company, for your children. You need to spend time with them. And then your time is going to be blessed. Everything you're going to do is going to be blessed because the Birkat Hashem Itashir, the blessing of Hashem is going to be with you and it's going to make you rich. Rich in wisdom, rich in money, rich in, 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 in advice, rich in, in everything you need. Rich in blessings. You're going to have the power to bless other people because you let Hashem in. But if you want to push yourself in, no, for my wife, I know what I need. No, from that company, I know what I need. No, from those children, I know what I need. So then there's no place, not for your children, not for your wife, not for your friends in your life. So you're all alone. That's great. We don't need another Haman Rasha. We don't need that. We have enough in the government. We have enough Haman Rasha, 120 Haman Rasha sitting all day long scamming and thinking how to take more money out of our pockets. We don't need more than those 120. We don't need that. We need to nullify ourselves to Hashem. And we need to believe that Hashem Barach, He will take our small light, small candle, and He's going to illuminate the world with that light. Even that now it looks small. It won't be small for a long time. Because from one candle you can let thousands and millions and, and everyone going to shine. Because people seek for the truth. People want the truth. The truth is missing. Why it's missing? Because we're not exposing. You're not exposing your own truth. The truth that you're weak. The truth that you need help. The truth that you're afraid to confront yourself. The truth that you want to, to improve your actions and you don't know how to do that. That truth is hidden. <clears throat> When you're going to expose that truth immediately in the Yidbot Dedot, you're going to say those words and you're going to say, Hashem, give me an advice. Hashem is going to expose His truth. Corresponding to your effort, Hashem is going to reveal His light. If you're going to reveal your truth, Shuvu Elai, you're going to come back to Hashem. Vashuvu Elechem, Hashem is going to come back to us also. Hashem is going to give you all the advice, all of the wisdom, all of the tools, all of the powers, everything you need. Hashem is going to hand it to you. Hashem is just going to give it to you. Because Hashem wants to give. But if you don't have a vessel, so how you want to receive? Now Hashem wants to give you water. You don't have a cup. You want Hashem to water your face. You want Hashem to, to pour it all on you. You're going to be insulted. You're going to be disgraced. If you don't have the vessel to contain the Shefa, the humility that is required to contain the Shefa, it's just it's all going to mess you up. You're, not going, to, you're going to feel embarrassed. You're going to say, oh, it's not what I asked for. The truth is that we're asking for vessels because the Shefa, the bounty, is already here. It's all here. We're asking for vessels. That's what you need to ask. Let me be a vessel, a cynically. Make me a vessel to contain the light. The light is here. You think Hashem is not here? The light is here. <laughs> the light is just put the right vessels in the right <coughs> spots. You just need to change a little bit, to move that a little bit to the side, a little bit to the side. That's it. You made a vessel. Suddenly, it's full. And then you need to make another vessel. That's it, to move, work on another vessel. The light of Hashem Barach is coming down, and it's written that the man, the, 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 the food of the angels, is coming down, a parnasah that worth 2,000 years comes down every day. Every day you have the amount of parnasah of 2,000 years. Every day. Just you don't have the vessels. You lose everything. You're like a thief. Because you're like a thief. Because you forget. Because all day long you're scamming and thinking and, and trying to achieve things. And, and you put yourself, what I should do, what I'm going to do. You're not here at all. Nullify yourself to Hashem. Ask Hashem, what do you want me to do, Hashem? What's my purpose in life? <laughs> One person went to Rav Berlan to ask him, what should I do for Parnassar? Rav Berlan told him, you're not allowed to work. He said, but I want to have Parnassar. He told him, so you're not allowed to work. He said, so I'm going to make the money. He told him, don't worry, I'm going to make the money for you. I'm going to send you the money. Don't worry. That's the will of Hashem. That's the will of Hashem. That's the will of Hashem. Hashem, He knows exactly what is good for you. And Hashem is teaching you that. So just open your eyes and see what Hashem is saying to you. You don't need to work for Parnassah. Wake up already from that dream. 
You just need to work on your humility and then the bounty just going to flow into your pockets, into your vessels. You're going to find the money in your pockets. You're just going to find money in your pockets. You're just going to be able to pay on everything you need. You don't need to worry about Parnasa when you have Hashem Barach that He is in charge of all bounty. Hashem is saying, Li kesef, li azav, no Hashem. Words of Hashem, I own all of the silver, all of the gold, it all belongs to me. You don't need to work for Shefa. You don't need. If you don't have that, you don't see that Hashem runs the show, so you need to work. Great. So when a person doesn't have that, he doesn't see that it's all run by Hashem already. I don't know how you cannot see that. But I can understand how you cannot see it. Today I see it. But I remember that it took me a long time to work on that until I came to that. And every time Hashem is turning the light off and you need to remind yourself and to remind yourself, no, Hashem is with us and Hashem is with us and Hashem going to help and Hashem is helping and Hashem helped already and Hashem going to help some more. And you need to remind yourself that. But you purchase the wisdom out of the experience. You work. You go to the field, you do it Buddha do your, you do tshuva, you pray, you ask for help from Hashem in Barach, and Hashem is helping. And Hashem is helping again and again. And the wisdom is never to back off. Never, ever to back off. Never to back off. And Yehush Ba'olam Klal. There is no despair in the world at all. Never. Just always. You see you have a problem. You see you have a difficulty. Do tshuva. Go to Hashem. Break the walls. Break the door. Open. Get into Hashem. Palace. Find Hashem. Grab Hashem. Talk to Hashem. That's how you should do your Yidbo de Duyot. The Yidbo de Duyot should be prayers of truth. We're not playing a religious act. We're not being Haredim. We're not being Hasidim. We're not in an imaginary world of, 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 of Tafkidim, of, of parts in a certain show. We are seeking for the truth. We want the truth. There is Hashem, so there's nothing else uh, around. Nothing else except of Him. Now you need money? Go to the source. Now you need peace? Go to the source. Now you need quiet? Go to the source. Now you need someone to heal your nefesh, your spirit, because you lost your mind? Go to the source. Go to him. Go to him. Not to rabbis. Not to kiss hands of rabbis and to give pidyonot note and to ask for advice and to I don't know what. They're going to do for you tikkuna niftarim and going to take your visa to do tikkuna niftarim, tikkuna niftarim, tikkuna niftarim. No, only $50, tikkuna niftarim, tikkuna Is that tikkuna niftarim? Oh, because I don't see the Avrechim are doing anything. I just see tikkuna niftarim, with the visa tikkuna niftarim. Tikkuna niftarim, it's not with the visa. Tikkuna niftarim, it's to take the Sefer Tehilim and to cry all of the Sefer Tehilim for $50. Oh, nice. I don't believe you. I'm sorry, I don't believe you. I'm not going to give you the visa. I know that if I'm going to cry for the Niftarim, it's going to be a lot more useful for the Niftarim than if I'm going to give you my visa. Tikkuna Niftarim. Fifty dollars, only fifty dollars. Don't worry, Avrechim, Yireh Shamay. Psh, Yireh Who is testifying that they're Yireh Shamay? You have someone that's going to say that they're Yireh Shamay? Avrechim. Oh, bumps, Avrechim. Charedim. Pur Charedim. Pur Charedim. Tikkuna Niftarim. Pur Charedim, Tikkuna Niftarim. Tikkun niftarim. If you want, if someone has shalom passed away, you want to do tikkun, fix that soul, and you don't know how to do it, so you Google it, and then you have lists of hundreds of charedim that's gonna charge you fifty dollars. That's it. That's what you have. No use for the niftarim. Almost. You know what? It's tikkun niftarim. You know what you need to do for tikkun niftarim. Like that Rabbi Yudah Ptaya wrote the Tikkun Niftarim, what you need to fix by the sheet of Rabbi Yudah Ptaya, great. Take it, learn. Tikkun Niftarim, do Tikkun Niftarim. You need to take the Sefer Torah, Sefer, you need to take out Sefer Torah. You need to, to put the Sefer Torah on the Bima. And then you need to take Sefer Tehilim. And then you need to make circles around the Sefer, and, and seven circles around the, uh, around the Sefer Torah. And you need to cry all of the Sefer Tehilim bedma'ot, with tears. You need to cry with tears all of the Sefer Tehilim. And then you have another th- things that you need to do over there. Parakim, chapters, things yeah. that you need to do. Uh, Sheva Ro'im. You need to do so many things. And, and it's not it's just a, 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 a physical thing that you just need. It's not a keyboard that you key those keys and you fix those souls. We don't have that keyboard. 
If you really want to have that keyboard, you need to be connected to Hashem. And then you cry to Hashem, and then you yearn to Hashem, and you cry on the souls of the Niftarim, and you say Tehillim, and, the, and then it's, it's very useful. Charge $50 on Tikkun Niftarim, it's not useful at all. It's not useful at all. So if we also want to get closer to Hashem, it barach, so not rolling in the snow, and not, um, not eating meat and, 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 and dairy in Monday and Thursday. That's not going to bring us closer to Hashem. Check yourself. Is it fixing you? You see that your midot is better now? You become to be a better person now after that you fast all day long or that it just, you lost your mind and actually at night you, 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 you explode on, on, on your wife at home and, and, that, and that's it. And that was the tikkun, now you need tikkun and iftarim because you killed your wife. A real tshuva only going to bring us closer to Hashem. Only a real tshuva is going to bring us closer to Hashem. Only real conversation with Hashem begging. Hashem, I'm losing my mind. Hashem, I don't know what to do with myself. Hashem, I need your help. Hashem, please help me with my children. Hashem, please help me with my parnasa. Hashem, please help me with my tshuva. I don't know what to do. What should I do? That conversation already brought you to Hashem. In the moment that you just open your mouth and just start to talk to Hashem, in that moment, you're with Hashem. No rolling in snow going to bring you so close to Hashem. No tikkun aklali, no trips to Uman. Nothing going to bring you close to Hashem Barach like one hour it bodedut with Hashem. Even by the advice of going to Uman, Rabbeinu said, if you're going to come and you're going to say tikkun aklali on the tzion, that's the highest promise of them all. No righteous person before, no Dari Kadosh, no Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. None of those righteous people gave us a higher promise than the promise of Rabbeinu on saying Tikkun Aklali in, in, in Uman, in the Tzion of Rabbeinu Kadosh. None of them that for sure he's going to redeem you, take you out of hell. No one promised something like that before. No one, no one ever before. Not Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, not the, the Chafetz Chai. No one, no one ever. With all of the promises, all of the Mikubalim, Rabbi Yudha Ptaya, the, the, the Baba Sali, all of those Tzadikim, they promised a lot, Abir Yaakov, a lot of promises. None of them promised what the Rabbeinu promised. But, Rabbeinu promised on Shaid Bodedut, a higher promise, than the promise that you promised on, on Tikkun Aklali in the Tzion. Everyone wants to go to Uman. Why? Because it's easy. You pay $800, $1,500, and that's it. And you go and you say Tikkun Aklali, 10 minutes, and that's it. You're off duty, you're exempt, you know. That's, you're going to have one thing. But if you're going to do it, but the duty, if you're going to talk to Hashem, Rabbeinu said, He promised to us that He's going to bring us to the purpose of our lives. That if a person is doing tshuva, Rabbeinu promised that he's going to bring us to the purpose of our life to find our destiny. That's higher than to be saved from hell. If you're going to do it, but do it, you're never going to see hell. You don't need the Rebbe to take you out of hell if you don't need hell. If you've done tshuva and you purified yourself and you cleaned yourself, you don't need no, no one to save you from hell. You're never going to see the face of hell. The only reason that you can maybe see the face of hell is if you went down to hell to save other people from hell. If you came down to take other people out from hell. And that promise is ready for each and every one of us if we're going to do tshuva. And if you're going to do tshuva, if each and every one of us is going to start talking to Hashem Barach on our issues, on our stress, on our lack of understanding of how to run our lives, of how to work on our midot, on how to be kind, on how to count on Hashem, on how not to be afraid of stressful situations, on how to be people of truth. If we're just going to open our hearts and talk to Hashem Barach on that, on daily basis, the development, the improvement that we're going to see in our lives is going to be so huge, so great, that no other advice in the world you can, you can compare it to that. Not Torah, and not rolling in the snow, and not Tikkun Aklali, and not dipping in ice water, and not fasting from Shabbos to Shabbos. Nothing going to bring you closer to Hashem Barach like they would do it. And Rabbi Nachman Breslev said that, that he was fasting and torturing himself, and he broke and ruined his own body. But he said, but now that I know the power of it, I know that it is 
מעלה גדולה ועליונה מן הכל is higher than everything else. And if I would know that, then what that I know today, I wouldn't break my body. I would do only it for the dot. Every day to have time that you're dedicating that time to a conversation with the Creator. And you talk to Him like you talk to your best friend from the heart. You're not reading Tehillim. You're not reading Likutet Filot. You're not reading no confessions of, of Rav Hai Gaon. You're not doing anything except of talking to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. Dear Father in Heaven, I need your help. I need to relax myself. Please help me. I need healing. I need to relax myself. I need to find my path in life. I need to learn what's my destiny. Is it the, re, the re, right, right shidduch for me? Is that my wife? Should I marry her? What should I do, Hashem? Is that the real source? From that job, I need to find my panasa. Maybe you want me to do something else, Hashem. How should I work on my shalom bayit? All of those arguments, Hashem Yitbarach, I can't handle it anymore. I'm losing my mind. I see the children being hurt. Please, Hashem Yitbarach, give me the right advice. Simple conversation with Hashem Yitbarach. Simple. In the end of time, when Hashem is going to reveal Himself, and the hidden Torah is going to be revealed, what people will know in that day? What's the big secret? That Hashem Hu HaElokim. That's it? Yes. Is it so simple? Yes. Just people so far from it, even today. But that's what is going to be revealed. That's it. The Hashem is in charge. That's it. That's the hidden Torah. So the, the, the secrets of Atika Setima'a, the ancient wisdom that was covered and blocked for so many generations. That what? That Enod Milvado, there is nothing except of Hashem, and it's all for the good. And that's it? Yes. That's it. Welcome to Days of Mashiach. That's it. What else you want? If you're going to go with that wisdom, with that simple understanding that Hashem Itbarach is the one that decides everything in your life, every detail, every fine detail, Hashem Itbarach is in charge of that with his private, private, thin, 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 thin supervision. On every detail, like a breath of a hair, on every detail and detail, he's supervising and he's choosing everything. If you will walk with that, you're going to see miracles in your life. Miracles in your life. Every book that you're going to open, it's going to be written, going to tell you what you need to do in your life. Every prayer that you're going to ask, you're going to see Ruach HaKodesh is speaking out of your throat. You're going to see that you're talking prayers that Hashem Barach is letting you pray. That you're going to see that Hashem Barach is building your future out of your tefillot because you pray on things that you didn't have those things in mind one hour ago. And suddenly Hashem is making you wiser. And Hashem is giving you the prayers to pray on things that you, that, 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 you, that you need. And then you're going to see the supervision of miracles happening. How the money is coming in the right time. How people with their advice and their support are coming in the right time. And friends with good ideas are coming. And everything is joining and everything is taking its part in that machine of Hashem Barach supervision. And you're going to just enjoy it. And you can just say, okay, I'm nullifying myself to Dash Gachav Hashem. I don't need to choose. I just want to be with you. I choose to be with you. Shifti bevet Hashem kol I want to spend my life with you, Hashem. Whatever you want me to do. You want me to fight? I'll fight. You want me to learn? I'm learning. You want me to pray? I'll pray. You want me to do tshuva? I'm going to do tshuva. How are you going to know what to do? Look in front of your eyes. What's going to make you closer to Hashem? What's going to make you happy? What's going to heal your soul? What's going to bring you closer to Hashem? Try that. Go one time to, to roll in the snow, to fast for a week. I, if you say that it, it brings good results, okay, so do it again. But if in the end of that journey you're going to be broken and sad and nervous and depressed and not finding yourself, so okay, so wake up. It's not the right path for you. You're not that Haredi yet. I don't know if you should be. I don't want that. We're not depend in anything, in, in anything. Hashem Barach is with us. Hashem Barach is with us. Hashem Barach is with us. Understand it. Hashem is with you. With you. Bring him down. Bring him in. 
You build Mishkan. Do whatever you do. You donate your, your share. You give your part. You learn. You give your masrot money. You do something with your time. You do good things, good mitzvot. Great. Hashem now is inside of you. That's what you need to understand. You do? Great. Now Hashem is backing me up. Hashem is inside of you. That's it. You don't need to do that Hashem will be with you. You do because you want to do. Because you love Hashem. Because you're commanded to and you want to. I went with my child in the morning of Shabbat yesterday. We went to the, to the Bet Knesset. We went to the Mikveh, to the Shul. I told him, we're not working for no one. We're going to the Mikveh. If we're going to like that fila in that Shul, we're going to pray in that Shul. If not, we can go back home. We're not working for no one. Not working for no one. And then I told him, even not for Hashem. We're doing whatever we understand that we want to do for Hashem because we want to serve Hashem. Not in slavery, not out of fear. I'm sorry, I'm not afraid. I don't know what to tell you. I don't, maybe I'm, I'm defected. I don't know. Maybe I belong to a different generation. What he can do to me? What, 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 what? He can kill me? Okay, so I'm done. Anyway, he can kill me if he wants. And now, out of fear, fear will not going to push me forward to do more things, to achieve more things in Avodat Hashem. Okay, now we came to that understanding. Hashem can cut me from eternal life. Great. Hashem can take that from me. Great. Okay, the worst that can happen. Okay, now that we, are, that we got it, we have it. Okay. So what, do, what should I be afraid of it for the rest of my life? No, I'm going to do the best that I can. Not because I'm afraid. Hashem also can, can give me an achala belim eitzarim. Can give me a land with no borders. Can give me the shefa, endless shefa, bounty. Hashem can give it to me also. So now, because I want the shefa, I'm going to serve him? Never. Because I'm afraid that he's going to punish me? For sure not. Never. Only out of love. Only because really I love him. Because really I understand that He exists and He's the Creator and He influences life and He gives life and He's also so merciful and kind and, 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 and loving and, and caring. So I, 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 I want to help Him. <laughs> I'm doing it for Him. I'm Lishma. It's, that's Lishma. I'm doing it for Him. I want to help Him. Lishma Tcha Kivino Hashem. To your salvation we're hoping Hashem. That your children will, will not going to be lost. That your name is going to be great and famous in the world. That people are going to uh, respect you. Only through the gates of Tshuva Me'ahava, Tshuva out of love. That's the only way for us to enter closer to Hashem. Thank you very much. Chazak Uvaruch.